sitting up in the two beds beside each other. Eleanor and Theodora reached out between and held hands tight. The room was brutally cold and thickly dark. From the room next door, the room which until that morning had been Theodora's, came the steady low sound of a voice babbling, too low for words to be understood, too steady for disbelief, holding hands so hard that each of them could feel the other's bones. Eleanor and Theodora listened, and the low, steady sound went on and on, the voice lifting, sometimes for emphasis, on a mumbled word, falling, sometimes to a breath, going on and on. Then, without warning, there was a little laugh, a small, gurgling laugh that broke through the babbling and rose as it laughed on, up and up the scale and then broke off suddenly in a painful gasp and the voice went on. Theodora's grasp loosened and tightened and Eleanor, lulled for a minute by the sound, started and looked across to where Theodora ought to be in the darkness, and then thought screamingly, Why is it dark? Why is it dark? She rolled and clutched Theodora's hand with both of hers, and tried to speak and could not, and held on blindly and frozen, trying to stand her mind on its feet, trying to reason again. He left the light on, she told herself. So why is it dark? Theodora, she tried to whisper, and her mouth could not move. Theodora, she tried to ask, why is it dark? And the voice went on, babbling, low and steady, a little liquid, gloating sound. She thought she might be able to distinguish words if she lay perfectly still. If she lay perfectly still and listened and listened and heard the voice going on and on, never ceasing. And she hung desperately to Theodora's hand and felt an answering weight on her own hand. Then the little gurgling laugh came again, and the rising mad sound of it drowned out the voice. And then suddenly, absolute silence. Eleanor took a breath wondering if she could speak now. And then she heard a little soft cry which broke her heart. A little, infinitely sad cry. A little sweet moan of wild sadness. It is a child, she thought with disbelief. A child is crying somewhere. And then, upon that thought, came the wild, shrieking voice she had never heard before and yet knew she had heard, always in her nightmares. Go away! It screamed. Go away! Go away! Don't hurt me! And after, <laughs> sobbing. Please don't hurt me! Please let me go home! And then, the little sad crying again. <laughs> can't stand it, Eleanor thought concretely. This is monstrous. This is cruel. They have been hurting a child, and I won't let anyone hurt a child. And the babbling went on, low and steady, on and on and on, the voice rising a little and falling a little, going on and on. Now, Eleanor thought, perceiving that she was lying sideways on the bed in the black darkness, holding with both hands to Theodora's hand, holding so tight she could feel the fine bones of Theodora's fingers. They think to scare me. Well, they have. I am scared. But more than that, I am a person. I am human. I am a walking, reasoning, humorous human being.
Mm-hmm. And I will take a lot from this lunatic, filthy house. But I will not go along with hurting a child. No, I will not. I will, by God, get my mouth to open up right now. And I will yell. I will. I will yell. Stop it! She shouted. The lights were on the way they had left them. And Theodora was sitting up in bed, startled and disheveled. What? Theodora was saying. What, now? What? God. God! Eleanor said flinging herself out of bed and across the room to stand shuddering in a corner. God! God! Who, whose hand was I holding? 